we pray and excited amen. amen thank you very much you can see now we're looking at our passage here for this time you know the passage by now what's the passage now second kings chapter six we're looking at it from verse one in second kings chapter six verse one and the sons of the prophet said unto elisha behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight or too narrow or too confined or too small for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan and take thence every man a beam and let us make us a place there and where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye and one spiritual crucifixion. This is from the heart of the man, the heart of the woman, the heart of the believer that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is no physical crucifixion. It is a spiritual experience. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Yet not I, I don't live by struggling anymore. I don't live by sleeping on hard ground anymore. I don't live by walking on pebbles anymore. I don't live by punishing myself anymore, thinking if I punish my flesh, if I punish myself, if I deny myself for sleep, if I deny myself for food, then I live the righteous. He said, no, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. It's resurrection. It's not just that he rose from the dead, that living Christ, that reigning Christ, he reigns in me. He reigns in my heart. He reigns in my character. He reigns in my behavior. Reign, Master Jesus, reign. Reign, Master Jesus, reign over every act, over every action, over my behavior, over my identity over my opinion over the old life reign he says but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live not the life of the past not the life under the law not the life under self-righteousness the new life the redeemed life the righteous life the ransomed life the life that is reconciled unto God. It says the life which I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's the new life of the believer. We're passed away from the time of the law. Now we come to the Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, a sanctifier and now because he lives inside us he produces the life of Christ and the life of righteousness in us we're looking at Romans chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 6 Romans chapter 6 verse 6 knowing this that our old man is crucified the old man depraved man deceptive man deceptive nature in us that old man old character old habit old nature it says our old man is crucified with him is made impotent invalid is made powerless that old man the life we used to live, the character of the past, the habit of the past, that old nature is crucified and made impotent and powerless. It says that the body of sin, the total root of sin, and the one that generates and produces sin, that the body of sin might be destroyed, not suppressed, destroyed, not managed, destroyed not enlightened destroyed not controlled destroyed the life of the old man the lust of the old man the anger of the old man and the fretting 
of the old man it's not just to come under control just to be subdued it's not to be submerged within or under many of many other things that you know when you try to you grit your teeth when that anger comes and you are boiling on the inside and then you quickly run away from that place so that you will um, you will go to a place nobody will see and the psychologist might tell you let that anger come and then go somewhere and picture somebody in front of you and see that is the person that is causing the anger and every bad thing you wanted to say to that man don't say that in the public that will destroy your success that can take your business away from you that can put you in a class that you lose a lot of things but go in the secret and punch that air and punch that person as if you are fighting a personality that one is psychology that one doesn't work the anger is still there like a tiger like a tyrant like a lion but when you come to Christ and you stretch yourself on the cross of Christ and you're crucified and you can say I am crucified with Christ and the old man is crucified and the body of sin destroyed that henceforth we shall not serve sin you will not serve sin clean and clear that the grace of God in our lives will bring the new life in our lives will totally be new look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says for he that is dead who is that crucified with Christ dead with Christ he that is dead is freed from sin I am free you believe that I am free the Lord confirmed that in your life in Jesus' name. Let's look at number two there. Number two, the consecrated lifestyle or behavior like Christ. Like Christ. What Christ will do. What Christ will say. How Christ will feel. How Christ will act. That your consecration, your devotion now is to live the life that Christ would live if Christ were here today. Now, when we say living like Christ, you have to think like Christ because it's our thought that brings our emotion. If something is happening and you look at it, you focus on it, you don't focus on what you have, the grace you have, the goodness of God and the provision of God, you focus on that thing, that focus will bring feeling. And then, if that thing is a bad thing, and you focus on it, and you're thinking about that, your thoughts and your focus will bring a feeling of, it may be a feeling of rejection, a feeling of depression, a feeling of anger, a feeling of worry and anxiety because you have a wrong focus, a wrong feeling. And because of that, the way you feel is how you are now act. If somebody did something and you concentrate on that and you don't know who you are, a child of the king a follower of Jesus Christ, a person that has Christ living on the inside of him. And you have to live like Christ. If you don't think like that, and you have the thought the other way, then action will come. And when you take an action that is wrong, an action that is wrong, another action that is wrong, it's like you're walking a particular path on a grass field. After you walk there, up and down a long time you'll make a pass on that grass field and naturally anyone coming will just walk on that automatically when you concentrate on the wrong thing on the wrong feeling on the wrong emotion on the wrong act and you act like that every time it becomes your personality 
your personality. Even without anything to be angry about, you get angry. Nothing to be furious about, you get furious. Nothing to, you know, shout about, be worried about, you get furious and you shout and you're worried and you're frightened. But now, when you come to Christ and you know that all that matters is what Christ will do. How Christ will think. You have the thoughts of Christ, you have the mind of Christ, you have the way of Christ, you have the behavior of Christ, you have the lifestyle of Christ, and you are thinking of Christ, Christ every, every time that lives in you. It makes your life, what your behavior, what your lifestyle ought to be. It will happen. It has happened already. That the life of Christ will be reproduced in your life in Jesus. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. We don't have time uh, for me to take you through, uh, you know, the way it ought to be. Uh, the way it ought to be is this. When you read that sentence, you emphasize the I. Whatever is happening around you, you say I. I, I, so and so you mention your name, I am, then you emphasize the am, I am, then you emphasize the crucified, 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 old nature, crucified, the way I used to act, crucified, and the way I used to behave, crucified, and then with Christ, with Christ, you emphasize with Christ. And then later, you read everything together. I am crucified with Christ. Anything happening around you, you remind yourself, I am crucified with Christ. I used to behave like that. I used to think like that. I used to talk in that other way. But now, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life I live now is exciting. The life I live now is productive because nevertheless I live and yet not I. I couldn't do this by myself. I couldn't act like this by myself. There is a power greater than my natural power. There is a power greater than my normal self that lives big in me now but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, in the flesh, marriage flesh, in the flesh, bachelor's flesh, in the flesh, spiritual's flesh, in the flesh, the life I now live on earth, no matter my situation, marriage or not marriage, job or no job, Christ is always happy, I'm happy. Christ is excited. I'm excited. Christ is purposeful. I'm purposeful. Christ is on top of the stormy sea. I'm on top of the stormy sea because the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Somebody else may doubt the love of God. He loves me. And what I'm going through, some people might say, if you're going through that, maybe God does not love you anymore. He loves me. Why? Love me enough to give himself for me. I pray this will be reproduced in every life in Jesus' name. And then you live like he would have been living if he were here right now. We're looking at First Peter chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 21. First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. For even here unto were ye called. Even here unto were ye called. I am called to salvation. I'm called by the Savior, and I'm called to live like the Savior because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye shall follow his test. Ye shall follow his test. What does that mean? I look at the life of Jesus, and I look at the way and the place he places is uh, is is steps and then i see that step and whatever is happening now i say what will christ do in this condition in this situation how will he think how will he talk how will he live and how will he interact that he should follow his steps 
I pray you'll follow his steps. Look at Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The mind that was in Christ Jesus. Now, you're saved by grace. And you come to God by, by, by grace. And you are in with Christ by grace. Now, it's not just that I believe in the head. I believe in the heart. And now I have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Whatever we're hearing in the current affairs, the mind of Christ. Whatever may be happening in economy, ecology, I have the mind of Christ. Whatever may be up or down, down or up, and whatever storm, there may be the mind of Christ. The mind that knows that whatever the Father has ordained, that is what will happen. And so we are not jolted, and we are not surprised, and we are not uh, distressed or discouraged because we have the mind of Christ. And that is what the new life and the new experience, that is what it does in our lives. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then we're looking at First John chapter 2 verse 6. First John chapter 2 verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought also so to walk, so to talk, so to think, so to behave, so to act as Christ as he himself also was. He that says, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as Christ walked. Amen? Amen? Look up here. There are times in our lives when things happen, we have the knowledge in our head that whatever happens, I should live like Christ. The grace is there. The Christ is there. He lives on the inside of you. But when something happens, we have an automatic way of responding, of reacting. We never consult Christ. We never think of Christ. We're too fast in reacting. We're too fast in responding. And when you are like that, the old reaction the old action the old feeling is what will pop up every time you have not even you know called for that but that's what will happen but if you can